Hey, Change the World founders. Well, it's a new year and that means retreats. Uh, so I have five weeks straight of two day retreats with our different investment companies lined up in January and into February. And it has me doing a lot of research. And so I was online uh, doing some research around one of my favorite websites. That's called Adesis, adesis.com. Put a link down below. Uh, and Adesis is this guy that over 40 years ago, nearly 40 years ago, mapped out corporate life cycles. And he did it in a way that was extremely smart. Uh, and most of the companies that we support at Findaway are in infancy, uh, trying to get to go-go. And so I was doing a little research on infancy. And let me show you uh, this page. I hate reading off a website, but this just really struck me as so important, uh, such an important message to get out that I want to kind of read you a little bit. So according to, infancy, uh, according to Adesis, infancy begins the moment financial risk has been undertaken and the founder quits her paying job, signs the loan documents, or promises 40% of the company to outside investors. These are virtually all the companies that we're invested in at Findaway because we support you know, seed level uh, pre-revenue, you know, smaller companies, even pre-revenue up to call it hundred thousand dollars a month in sales. So these, uh, uh, the way that Jesus described this is really fascinating. So let's just read a few things here. He says, infant organizations are necessarily action oriented and opportunity driven. Of course, we all resonate with that. If you're a change the world founder, uh, that's running these kinds of, um, uh, companies, the focus instantly changes from ideas to action. They've got to do it all. Wear a lot of hats, like a newborn baby learning to walk, Performance in infant organizations is inconsistent. It goes up and down. Unexpected crises appear with little notice. Does this sound familiar? Because infant organizations lack systems, it's easy for them to get into trouble. And that's part of what we're trying to bring to our investment companies and the folks in the Findaway Club is some systems and some ways to think about things, but not overly taxing. You can't get bureaucratic at this small level. So let's keep reading. Problems with infancy. Um, the problems that are consistent with infancy is uh, lack of activity and stress can be a sign of an infant in trouble. Uh, if you start getting stressed out, for example, there's a whole laundry list, and I'll send you this link. I'll put the link in the, uh, in the blog uh, post, but some normal problems. Customers experiencing problems with the product. I'm seeing that with a couple of the companies that I'm working with right now. Um, lots of examples, but it's just not working perfectly or you're getting some bad reviews. Struggle to complete the product or service. I've, I've got another company right now that's got really long... Uh, lead times uh, for co-manufacturers or high MOQs, and those long lead times are putting them in out of stock situations. Totally normal. Few procedures, rules, policies, or systems, which I spend a lot of time talking about uh, with companies. Founder and other mistakes. Management by crisis, one crisis to another. This is just a depth of knowledge here from Adesis that I really encourage you to read. But let me jump down here to the pathologies of infant organizations or what kills an infant organization. I was having a great conversation with one of the companies we're invested in uh, last week at their retreat and all of the signs that are uh, uh, outlined here we saw in this conversation and I went right here. So let's just read this. Infant mortality occurs if the company is unable to continue to fund its negative cash flow. If you run out of money, that's a sign of infant mortality. Certainly that's a problem with most of the companies that we see is, um, you know, that risk. If you make a mistake that results in irreparable loss of liquidity or if crucial founders lose their commitment and interest in their baby. And I've actually got one company right now where the founder's just so stressed out, they're kind of losing interest. It's getting mundane. They're at a point now where it feels like it's kind of mundane for them. And that can be scary. Uh, that can lead to infant mortality or the death of your company. So what does Adesis say as the prescription? Uh, you know, I spend a lot of time writing about how to run a company and, and some of these things, but this guy wrote this over 40 years ago. These principles are so important today. Let's just read some of these. Companies in their infancy require a strong arm to keep them on course. Most successful companies had an entrepreneur that pushed and had a really strong vision and was strong with that vision and pushed hard. What is needed is a founder who can galvanize and unite the efforts of his or her employees by providing clarity, certainty, and security in the face of overwhelming uncertainty. Uh, so if you're losing interest or stressed out, recognize that that's going to trickle down in your organization and potentially lead to the death of your company. Let me just read this again. Certainty and security in the face of overwhelming uncertainty and lack of clarity. Infant companies do not progress swift, swiftly without leadership that is strong, decisive, and fair. And I would say that that includes having a really strong vision of where you're trying to take your company. Infant companies need more of everything. Sales, production, more improvements, more effort, more focus. Everyone must be action-oriented and driven by an unquenchable thirst for results. 
we call that urgency, responsible urgency. There has to be an urgency and a, and a focus on that urgency is really crucial to make sure that your baby uh, doesn't perish. Infant organizations can also benefit from judicious use of people outside your organization that are uh, uh, capable of accomplishing crucial tasks such as selling to key customers, raising capital, or recruiting talent. Partnering uh, with investors, partnering with brokers, partnering with the right mentor who might know marketing better than you. This is really crucial for companies at this stage. Not necessarily hiring what you need, uh, but using those outside uh, resources judiciously, as uh, Adiza says here, uh, is really, really important. Staffing the board with friends and relatives is a good idea, only if they can also take on meaningful work. So when you bring on those advisors and those investors, making sure that they're offering value is really, really important. And the last couple here, well-intended investors and advisors may counsel infant organizations to spend more time analyzing and predicting their financial needs, improving sales forecasting, and projecting staff requirements. I'm not a big fan of that. Projections need to be um, directional. You definitely need a budget. Uh, and the main reason for a budget to me isn't necessarily to hit the budget on, you know, you could be higher or lower, but it's to learn from that budget. And I've written extensively about that. The best companies to me in this infant stage are a learning organization, constantly learning. And then the last thing he says here is when an infant company finally establishes its products or services with key reference accounts in the marketplace and begins to enjoy strong demand, consistent growth, sales growth, and healthy cash flow from sales, the organization transitions into the next stage, which is go-go. And this is the key. Understanding that you're in infancy trying to get to go-go will really help you set your direction and set your key objectives and, and determine what's most important for your company. What you want to do is get to go-go. And to me, that's about focus, uh, establishing the right path. And he calls these key reference accounts. And to me, for the smallest companies in the CPG world, that might be direct to consumer and Amazon initially with an eye towards just getting, getting establishing that cash flow, getting a, a consistent level of cash flow that will then allow you to grow into the go-go phase, which gives you many more options. And the last thing I'll point out is that um, you know at, uh, at Find A Way, we ascribe to this strategy map. I won't go into detail here. I've written a lot about it, and it's built on Patrick Lencioni's The Advantage, so if nothing else, uh, go get that book. Uh, but driving clarity in your organization, clarity what's most important, clarity around who the consumer is in the marketplace, clarity around why does the company exist can be very motivating through the hard times. And then really having an understanding of what's most important and maybe even blowing that down to one thing that's the most important for an infant organization can be extremely, extremely useful. So sorry to read to you today, uh, but doing this research, uh, Adidas is just so brilliant. Uh, I encourage everyone to go to the infancy section of Adidas and read this and read uh, and kind of gauge how you're doing against his list of what might harm the infant organization or maybe even put it out of business. How are you doing against those things? Are you doing some of those things? And then line it up against what he says you might do better to ensure that you can get to that go-go stage uh, on the curve and, and score yourself. Identify the gaps and then start working to fill those gaps. And just know that Find A Way of Mentors is here to help and support all Change the World founders in any way we can, including the Find A Way Club at findawayclub.com and also through investment. Uh, so reach out to us if we can help. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great, have a great rest of the year. Take care.